In this video, I'm going to go over the labor leisure problem, um, sort of how it works, how to draw the budget constraints, what are on the axes, and how to think about the trade offs that we think about in the labor leisure problem. So, so we'll work an example, and hopefully through that example you'll see uh, why we even think about the labor leisure problem. Now this is one of my favorite problems in economics, one of my favorite applications of indifference curves and budget constraints. So I'm really excited to show this one to you guys. So let's get to work. Now the labor leisure problem really is about trading off two things. Work, time spent at work, and money. Now it really isn't about trading off work for money. Um, that's, that's what the transaction or contract is when we go to work, but that's not really how we're thinking about it and that's not how we're going to model it in, uh, in an economic framework. To start off with, money isn't really anything except for a medium for exchange. Really what we're thinking about is what that money could buy. In other words, consumption. The second thing is that we don't really like work uh, and in, in other words, it, it's something we in economics call a bad. It's something that if I have to do more of it or I get more of it, well, that's going to decrease my utility. Um, so my marginal utility is negative. Um, that's, that's bad. We would actually have sort of non-standard indifference curves if we put work on the horizontal axis. So you can see work is sitting here on the horizontal axis. So how about we put not work or time spent not working which we presumably like and have uses for. Um, and one, uh, one word that captures this is leisure. Now just one comment on the word leisure. Leisure in our discussion here is going to be time spent not working. It, it, can, be, uh, it can be valued for various things. You may be actually spending uh, quite a bit of effort um, in the physical sense in, in leisure activities like working out or doing chores around the house, but leisure, is, uh, leisure time is valued. Well, now let's think about the trade-off between consumption, which is a good, uh, and leisure, which is a good. We can think about how much leisure can we afford and how much consumption can we afford. Um, this is going to be the standard trick to draw a budget constraint. Basically say if I spend all of my resources acquiring leisure, how, how, much could I, how much could I obtain? If I spend all of my resources acquiring consumption, how much could I obtain? So let's start out with leisure. We can only actually experience so much time in leisure activities. If we spend all of our time in leisure, all 24 hours, um, that's, uh, that's all we have, and that's, that's the maximum amount of time that we can spend. And so the fundamental scarcity in this model is that we only have so many hours in a day. Uh, so for our example, let's say that this point A, where we get no consumption but all leisure, well, that's going to be 24 hours. Now, how much consumption could I afford if I spend all of my time working? Well, this depends on the wage rate. So let's, uh, um, I'm going to take this example from my childhood. Uh, when I was a child, my mom uh, had a bunch of chores piling up and she needed help around the house. And I was uh, actually pretty lazy. I liked video games. It was really hard getting me to do um, what uh, I needed to do around the house. Uh, so um, my mom decided that she would pay me a wage rate of $5 per hour working chores. She had hundreds of chores. I have no idea where she came up with these things. So if I have a wage rate of $5 per hour and I spend all 24 hours of my time in, uh, in working these chores, uh, 5 times 24, that's $120 of consumption if I have no leisure. We can, draw, we can pin down the budget constraint in the usual fashion by connecting points A and point B. So now that we have the budget constraint, we can think about, well, what, is, what was my optimal choice of, of time spent not in leisure but doing chores for my mom? Uh, what was my optimal choice and what did that look like? Well, I probably had a set of indifference curves. So here's, here's one indifference curve. I wouldn't necessarily pick, say, this point here where the indifference curve intersects the budget constraint, nor would I pick this point here. In fact, I would do the standard utility maximizing thing, and I would go to uh, would push that indifference curve out this direction until I actually reached a tangency between my indifference curve and my budget constraint. So this point O represents my optimal 
consumption and leisure bundle. Well, let's suppose that I spend eight hours uh, in, um, in working. Um, that would mean that I had 16 hours left for leisure. Well, with 16 hours left for leisure, I spend eight hours working, $5 an hour, I got $40 of, of money to spend on sort of new video games to play or model cars to paint. And typically, this is, this is really the way that we think about uh, labor supply decisions, whether they be kids working chores for their mom or whether they're workers who are deciding um, how much they want to work um, on, on a job. So let's now think about how a change in wage uh, would change this graph. So we swept away some of the labels here, so make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change <clears throat> we're going to change the price that uh, that I'm being paid to work uh, in this example. So uh, remember, my mom was paying me five dollars an hour to do chores. Now let's suppose she gives me a 50% raise to $7.50 an hour. Now, how does the budget constraint change in this example? Well, I, she didn't give me any extra time in the day. I'm still pinned down to 24 hours in the day. So this, this point here is fixed. I can't do anything about that. But if I work all of my time now, I, I can actually get up to a higher amount of consumption, 750 times 24 hours is $180, and so I'll be able to get $180 of consumption. And so if we connect these two dots, we see that the budget constraint will pivot outwards um, as just like a price, uh, price change in consumption. Uh, so that's, that's what we'll see here. And so my optimal point might look something like this. This is just one example I could have drawn. I could have drawn the tangency being down here where I took more leisure um, as well as more consumption. Um, with such a generous wage increase, I could afford to do both. Um, but the way I've drawn this is I've drawn this so that I actually end up spending, um, I've drawn this so that I end up spending more time working and less time in leisure. Um, and that's and that is one of the possibilities in this uh, in this model, and so you can see how we can um, how we can actually model the change uh, and how indifference curves and budget constraints come in. Um, it just takes a little bit of creative thinking about how do you how do you deal with uh, sort of a non-standard budget constraint that pivots around uh, sort of a different point than uh, how much income do uh, do I have in total. Hopefully this gives you an idea of how to work with uh, some of the various uh, quantities that you have to work with in a labor leisure problem. Um, and if you have your own labor leisure problems, you can sort of take this as a template um, to understanding sort of the bigger picture concepts and applying it to whatever scenarios you might encounter. We'll work an example uh, where blue.